Previously on Dude You Haven't Played This Game. Plenty of people have reviewed today's game, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. And while there's not much to say left about this game, it's still really great at... Why don't you play all four of us then? See for yourself. Fine. All your favorite rangers are here in this game. And Tommy Green Rain... Tommy... <laughs> My vote still goes to the Super Nintendo game. It stands out as being one of the finer Power Ranger video games that's ever been released. The Genesis title, eh, not so much. And now, the thrilling conclusion to episode 16. Alright, my turn. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the Movie on the Super Nintendo is a return to the previous beat-em-up game, crafted once again by the boys and girls over at Natsume. While it returns with some familiar gameplay and music and graphics, everything just kind of feels out of place. There are some advancements during in-game mechanics, but the game just feels like it's missing something from the previous title. Well, I'll tell you one thing, it gained a white ranger. Taking the six teenagers into battle, the game now sponsors a two-player mode, definitely something that should have been in the previous title. While every ranger still suffers from ginormous, muscle-ish man-body disease, the teenagers power up differently than in the first game, and in all honesty, this works out for the better. Collecting morphing icons fills a bar at the bottom of the screen. When the bar is full, it's morphin' time. What's cool is that if one person fills up their bar first, both rangers morph instead of waiting for the second player to finish filling their bar. Everybody even gets a badass backflip in the game. Cool stuff. Despite these advancements, the gameplay has taken a hit and relies more on platforming and less on combo moves. In the first game, your rangers had all sorts of attacks that really showed off the capabilities of a strong fighting mechanic mixed with the traditional beat-em-up genre. In this second Power Rangers game, in order for you to use your weapons, you have to power the bar back up while in ranger form. This is something that very rarely happens, mainly due to the bar taking way too long to fill up. Attacks were flashier and more fun in the previous game, whereas in this game, attacks feel overly simplistic. With the television series games, the story really could have focused on any part of the show's formula of teenage fighting, morphing, ranger battles, megazord fights, rinse, lather, repeat. But with the movies game, you'd think that there would be a story relating to the movie. Nope. You fight putties the entire time. There's no Dulcia or change of costumes. Only thing you'll see from the movie is the end boss, Ivan Ooze. It just seems like a wasted opportunity. Even the music, which was previously awesome, feels a bit flat after the initial stage. Tracks on the original game really popped and sizzled. The soundtrack felt more alive, and a large part of this could just be due to the composition of the tracks, this time written by Hiroki Iwatsuki and Haruo Ohashi, who have worked on tons of games that have much better soundtracks than this game. Strange but true, there are some solid tracks, just not nearly as many as the first game. So the version of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for the Super Nintendo is, well, not as good as the Super Nintendo original title. We do get to play as Tommy this time around, but the gameplay is just so stale, it just feels like a worse version of the original. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the Sega Genesis versions and compare those two. Did these two fare the same as the Super Nintendo games did? Let's take a look. Ben Presto actually realized that they needed to step up their game, and they created a beat-em-up in the vein of the first game for the Super Nintendo. While there's some problems with this title, its level of detail involving combo-based gameplay brings back a fresh yet repetitive combat system. However, looking over the entire package, I feel like Ben Presto really tried something different, yet something familiar, and it works pretty well. Right off the bat, we get a ton of story, and throughout the game you'll get a few twists and turns that feel like they were meant to drag the game's length out 
but it works quite well. Van Presto stuck with the story from the movie, interjecting some television show moments, such as the change from Trini, Jason, and Zack to Aisha, Rocky, and Adam. You get to play as all of the Rangers that were on the first season at certain times, as well as the newer Rangers, which shows that Van Presto at least gave a crap about the roots of the show. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Ugh. Ugh. I hate myself a little bit right now. We get to play as the Rangers the entire time. While I definitely miss the opportunity to morph from Teenager with Attitude to Power Ranger, it's smart of the developers to recognize that we want to play as the Rangers as quick as possible. The Super Nintendo version of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie is kind of like chocolate milk. Making it from scratch, of course. You're gonna sit there and make some chocolate milk. So you put the chocolate in and you start stirring it up and you get your... Uh, it really makes you work for your efforts. But Genesis title says, screw that, let's just go buy a Yoohoo. Really? A food analogy? Don't hate, appreciate. The graphics are a mixed bag. The background people that you save just look completely soulless. The characters and backgrounds look decent, but what is going on in these cutscenes? Everyone looks really horrifying. Look at this. Look at this. This stuff will give you nightmares afterwards. Musically, Van Presto took the fight songs of the television show and interjected them throughout the game. While there's not really any original music, the songs are done fairly well. Nowhere near as good as either of the Super NES games, but I enjoyed the soundtrack for what it attempts. The sound effects are really grating to the ear, and it just feels like the composer struggled with the Genesis sound chip. There are moments when you'll need to figure out where to go next, with not many hints or clues given. Take this room, for example. Ivan Ooze's goons just keep coming and coming, and you'll keep advancing throughout the room, but the walls have rocks that have to be attacked in order for you to progress. Normally games like this in this era used outlines, cracked walls, or lighting techniques to at least give a hint for how to advance, but this game just says, screw that, you figure it out, jerk. Yeah, it says jerk. Okay, it doesn't say jerk. But the point is, today's generation of gamers would be confused, because there was no giant arrow saying, hey, dummy, go this way, duh. Despite fighting the same enemies over and over again, Power Rangers the movie for the Sega Genesis is honestly the better of the two titles for the movie versions. And the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is one of the best Power Rangers games of all time. I would say that I would rank both of these on a pretty even level. They're both really great games with solid music, approachable gameplay, and overall, awesome. So, with that said, I guess this is where we call it and say... You guys suck! So, with that oh, said, yeah? I guess Why this is where we say... And say that to my front thanks for watching, tune in, hey, stay... no, I'm better. No, I'm the better game. No, hey, I'm the better game. Hey, do you game. want to stop fighting? Stop it, cut it out! I'm hey, trying to wrap up a review on. here. No, 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 no! Don't go through the window! No. Looks like it's about that time. It's morphin' time! Dragon Zord! <laughs>